Welcome everyone, it is me, official RP Jimmy, along with Bill. Bill, welcome to the Thank You Sting WrestleQuest live stream. How are you doing? We're going to talk about Sting memories, probably a little bit about the, the final match and everything, because I think this is this is it for him. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't, you know, some guys are like, yeah, is it really their last match? But Sting, I kind of believe. Yeah, Sting is one of the few that I believe when they say, this is my last match, I truly believe it was. So let me. So why don't we start off with some opening words, Bill? So what, give me some opening words on what, uh, on Sting in general. Oh my gosh. I mean, what an incredible performer he was. He, so agile for his size and he had something that not a lot of people had and that's charisma he had a lot of charisma and he never lost that you know he, he never lost the charisma he, he he never lost anything and i think it's amazing that he was able to you know go as long as he did and have a successful career. I think when I think of Sting, I think he is certainly one of the only wrestlers, I would argue, that's been around for a long time that it's hard to find someone saying something negative about in some way, yeah. or that they've done something in the past. I have learned a lot in the past, um, I don't know, maybe like 10 years that all your child, a lot of your childhood heroes didn't turn out to be great people in one way or another. Some worse than, than others, obviously. But Sting is someone that I've never really heard anything bad about mm -hmm. from anyone. And, you know, his career spans so far. Now, everyone, I will say this. This is a WrestleQuest playthrough for the next two hours as well, so... Don't think we forgot about that. Um, but a lot of it's going to be focused on Sting and Story here for the for the game. Um, feel free to leave your Sting memories as well. Uh, for those, I think we have some people in, in the chat right now that I could see. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I, I want to... And we'll talk a little bit about the last match. We'll talk a little bit about where... Different aspects of Sting's career. So I guess let's start by this as we start the playthrough. Um, did you watch anything leading into the match? And, and by the way, the gameplay is going to be much lower than usual because this is more of a talk thing um, for a lot of this. Uh, going into Sting's last match. I mean, the only thing that I really watched was Dynamite. I, I didn't watch Rampage, didn't watch Collision... It was just kind of, you know, when Sting's match happens, that's going to be, you know, when I watch it. Like, I did watch Dynamite. Well, I mean, but... I mean going into, like, old Sting stuff. Oh, old Sting stuff. Um, well, as you know, I did um, a live watch-along last week of Sting and Flair from Clash 1, and... I mean, other than that, I probably saw like a few of those, a few like music videos that people put together on Facebook or YouTube. That's really about it. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us, that, let's take some time to talk about your watch along and how that went and give us some detail about it while I go and check on if I have my equipment all uh, set up here. Okay, so we didn't have the biggest size crowd, but I'm okay with that because it was for the podcast, the DK and Bill Wrestling podcast, it was our first live watch along. So all together, there were five of us in the room. And as far as people who had seen it and not seen it, it was surprisingly even because there were two who had seen it two who had never seen it and 
one who had only seen clips. So we were kind of all, it was like right in the middle. So I managed to get, actually, I can't see your screen, Jim. Oh, really? Okay, let's see yeah. what's going on there. Thank you for letting me know. Mm hmm. hmm. Well, it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong. All right, Bill, so we'll check back in again here in a second. Oh, okay. All right. Is everything now okay? I can... All right, I don't yeah, know what man. happened there. Let me see if I actually... Anyway, go ahead. Continue what you were saying. Yeah. So, I got... Somebody sent me, like, the original video of the show. No edits or anything. Um, and we watched the match, and we talked about, like, some of our favorite sting moments sting matches and i have to say watching that match again because it had been a while since i had seen that match mm -hmm. when, when, was, when was the first time you saw it do you recall first time it had to be at least five years ago maybe a little bit more Okay. Um, but watching it again, it did not feel like it was a 45 minute match. Right. Like, it felt like it may have gone 20. Okay. And that's the sign of a really good match. And how did everyone else like it? What was the overall, what were the thoughts while you were rewatching that match? Oh, they loved the match. They, they really did. I, I think they were amazed at how, you know, Sting in 88 was able to hold up with Flair. And some of them were pointing out, you know, like some of the old school moves that you don't see anymore. And they were into the match. They really were. Okay, that's good. I mean, I guess I was watching clips here and there. Um, I did watch that that match. Uh, so let's let's get into some Sting memories here. Uh, like, what, what are some of your memories of Sting? What's the first time you actually saw Sting on TV? Did you ever see Sting live? I think I know the answer to that. But let us know. Go ahead. Okay. Um, as far as seeing Sting live, I was at a Nitro. It, it was the Nitro before Bash at the Beach 96. I don't remember if he wrestled on that show, but I do remember the part where Hall and Nash went over the barricade and it was him and Savage and Luger coming out to try to, you know, prevent whatever Hall and Nash were going to do. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as my first memory, I think my first first memory of Sting was probably when I was like six years old and I, I mentioned the angle like I don't know if this was the first time I saw Sting but it's like the first memory that I could think of is he was going to have a match with Rick Rude okay. for the US title at a Clash of the Champions and he gets attacked during the show by Lex Luger. So the whole thing is, is Sting going to make it back in time for mm -hmm. the match? So when it comes time for the match, Sting is driving the ambulance back to the arena. So I, he and he may have been the first one to do that. So if you want to thank anyone for that wrestling trope, thanks Sting. Okay. <laughs> um, so he so he gets out of out of the ambulance, and the babyface wrestlers are there. They're cheering him on, and he's limping. He's selling that leg injury like a million dollars. The fans are going crazy because he's back. And as soon as he gets in the ring, he and Rude start trading punches lefts and rights it was 
Oh my gosh, it was unbelievable. I could still see the image in my head to this day. For me, like the first time that I would have um, known of Sting is when I first started watching WCW. Um, mm -hmm. Because I remember when my dad showed me WCW, and I'm going to say this is in... 1993 in fact i okay. feel like it has to be and or if not close to it um might maybe late 92 but i don't think it, it is 92 right is i because I, I like sting and i was like who's this guy and i think like i was basically told he's their hulk hogan because yeah. hogan was still on wwe f at the time um and like I think for like he he was one of my first two favorite wrestlers of that time period. It was in WCW. It was him, mm -hmm. and I remember liking Cactus Jack a lot, actually. Right. Oh look, Slimy went up another level for doing nothing. Um. So yeah, that was my first iteration of Sting. Now I, I might want you to look something up for me here because I have seen Sting once in my life. Mm -hmm. And it was in TNA. Okay. And it was, but I don't know the date of the event. So here's, here's the deal. It was an event that was on WrestleMania 24 weekend. Cause I went to that. Okay. And I was in Florida, but I don't know what day it was of WrestleMania weekend, nor do I know when it would have aired. But I know who Sting fought. He fought All James right. Storm. Okay, now that sounds like that could have been a good match. Yeah. So I don't know if there's a way to actually look that up on your end, if you have any... Um, I might be able to look that up. Yeah, you, even if it's not right now, we still have about an hour and 45 minutes left here or so on the stream. So any time right. within that time. Um. So yeah, like... And you know what I feel since we're going to kind of bounce around here, I I was a little disappointed at the lack of acknowledgement on Joker Sting. Yeah, I kind of noticed that too. <laughs> I'm also very surprised that they didn't use any TNA footage. I'm sure TNA would have let them. Like, there's... Yeah. I like Joker Sting. But yeah, so Sting... So, uh, you know, I followed WCW, obviously, when he went to TNA, followed him there. Mm -hmm. um, did not follow him when he went to WWE. I wasn't really watching at all, to be honest with you, so I missed that whole run. In fact, that was, I kind of watched it for the first time last week. Because there was a Sting documentary. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, Rowdy Russ is chiming in. I, I, he wrote a lot. I know it's yeah, about Sting, so why don't you, why don't you read what he said? Okay, so he wrote, uh, he's in the car on his phone, blah blah blah. Um, as a kid, I know I'm gonna get it from him. How dare you say blah blah blah? As a kid, on vacation in Florida in like '90 or '91, I remember randomly seeing this, and he puts in quotes, "new wrestling show." Unquote. I'd never watched WCW at that. point. But all I remember from it is seeing the bleach blonde and the colorful face paint. Couldn't tell you when exactly or who he wrestled, but I still have that vivid memory of just the first time I saw him. And then he wrote, he never saw him live. Okay. And I think that's the, probably for the same reason that I only saw him once live. Because he wasn't in WWE, he... Mm -hmm. WCW never really ran... You know, like, there wasn't a place like Madison Square Garden or... Uh, I, I know my friend Richie had seen him at Nassau Coliseum. And I know which event that is, believe it or not. Um, that was a, an event in February of 1998. Okay. And I remember it is because I told him that he's going to be disappointed when he, when he misses Raw. Because that was the one where um, Mike Tyson was on, but also yeah. The Undertaker made his return. Okay, I'll have to look that up in the Nitro. Um, 
but you know what I did say um, during the, the live watch along the one thing I wish had happened and obviously it wasn't in Sting's control I wish he had had one match in Madison Square Garden I think he would have gotten a tremendous ovation yeah. in the garden just one time Okay, so I did find he didn't appear with the, with the, with, at the. He, I know he didn't wrestle, but he never appeared in the garden, just as an appearance while he was in WWE for that short amount of time. Not that I could think of. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not going to question you, but I'm just. I'm yeah, surprised I mean, it's not I, even an appearance. Yeah. I mean, I could probably look it up later, but I couldn't think of think of it at the time. Um. Okay, so I think I found the impact you're talking about. All right. By the way, thank you, Rowdy Ross, for your memory. I. I yes, hope we get bro. some more memories in the next two hours here. If you think of anything else, or just moments that you watched of him, Russ, that'd be fine too. Yeah. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about, like, next time I get a chance here, I want to talk about one of my favorite memories of him, which was Uncensored 1997. Mm. Okay, so the date, I think I've got it right. March 27th. Okay. He is in an eight-man tag match. This is a uh, four-impact TV show. I, I think this is live, actually, looking at it. No, there's no way that mine was live. No way. Because it was at, like, two in the afternoon. All right. So what I have here, and I got it off the history of WWE.com. I'll look up cage match in a minute. So he was in an eight-man tag. Him, Rhino, Kevin Nash, and Christian Cage defeated Tomko, AJ Styles, and Team 3D. Okay. That's the only thing they have. So I'm going to go to Cage Match and look up if they had other results. Yeah, because it, it would have aired like two or three weeks probably after that weekend. Right. Uh, Meanwhile, as we're Muchacho Man, I have no idea where I'm going. I'm just trying to follow this exclamation point. So I'll mention Uncensored right now. I yeah. think that's one of his best moments because that was when he finally decides that he's going to go against the NWO. Mm -hmm. That's where the NWO wins this very weird... Uh, I don't even remember what it was called anymore. This weird match that it was Team Piper versus Team NWO versus Team WCW but Team uh, Team Piper were had the horsemen in it. Right. Do you remember this at all or no? I I've never seen it but I know what you're talking about. So after the NWO win, and this was also, I believe, the first appearance of Dennis Rodman. Yeah, after it is. after that happens, and they win, this is when Sting comes out and Sting, you know, fights the NWO, and it gets a very very loud pop. So it, it's it's just that's one of my favorite Sting memories. Is is that one? Okay, I believe I have found the show that you were referencing. Okay, so. The actual date of it being taped was March 28th. It aired April 3rd. Okay. Sting defeated James Storm in nine minutes. Matt Morgan was the ref was the special referee for the match. I could see that being the case. I don't remember it particularly, but I could see that happening around that and time. It did respectably well on the TV. It got a 1.1 rating for that show. So they did pretty good on that week. Yeah. Um. Okay. I another sting memory moment for me, and it kind of it's it's in '97 as well. Is the last clash of the champions when? The NWO's in the ring. They had won. They, I think they beat Luger and Page. I don't, I don't remember who it was. Oh, I, I know which one you're talking about too. I just thought of yeah. that. Yeah. So as they're doing like this little celebration, and you know, 
the flyers are coming down, the lights start to flicker on and off. And you see Sting up in the rafters. And this is, I think, the debut of, you know, the, the theme song with the, the child speaking. Yes, I believe so, too. And he's got this vulture in his head. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on here? Um, and then you see the vulture. He's just there. And then he swoops like they turn the light out and he swoops in and it's like, oh, my God, what's going to happen next? Mm -hmm. was kind of the way like I had watched it because Sting never came down and this was one of those rare times especially in the in the late 90s where an animal was used because yeah. you know, we're, we're far from the days of Jake Roberts and Coco Beware and the Bulldogs and all them and here's this big freaking vulture, you know, right yeah. there with him. And it's like, oh, my God, what's going to happen now? Yeah, it was definitely so, like I, I that I believe was that was that the final clash of the champions? That was. I thought so. I thought so. And also had the most notable new NWO members join that night. Yes, the, the, the one that you will always bring up to me forever and ever. <laughs> Dinner in a movie. Which I feel like a lot of people don't even know what that is anymore. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, All right, so, All right, so, now, yeah, go so now I'm going to be, so now I'm looking up that Nitro that you were telling me about that your friend went to. Right, so. it would be in February. And you know how you can find it easier? Look up when uh, The Undertaker returned on Raw in 1998 in February. And then it's just that same day, except it's Nitro. I think I'm actually getting a little bit closer to it. Yeah, by the way, folks, yeah, I have no idea where I'm going. I, I'm trying to follow the exclamation point, and it's not leading me anywhere. I'm still going to keep trying, but I'll tell you right now, if uh, if I don't get any further in, like, the next ten minutes, I'll probably ask Bill to tell me where am I supposed to go. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I think I've got it. so the sh the nitro that you're talking about mm -hmm. was actually in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. That I, the, that that does make more sense actually. Yeah. So the main event for that nitro is Randy Savage and Sting beating Hogan and Scott Hall by disqualification. Okay. And it was a tag match for sure. It was it was, the, it was a tag match. Um man, they had a lot of disqualifications on this Nitro. <laughs> <laughs> Bret Hart defeats Brian Adams by disqualification. The oh. British Bulldog defeats Scott Norton by disqualification. Diamond Dallas Page defeats Hammer by disqualification. I well, let me guess. It was all it was it all NWO run-ins? Uh, probably not the DDP Hammer match. And then they had oh, what a classic they had here! Scott Steiner defeated Jim Duggan. There you go. Where in the world am I supposed to be going? Oh yeah, the, the Sprite commercial. Rowdy Ross brought up the Sprite commercial. Oh where yeah, he beats up, I he beats up a that. kid. 
Yes. Oh, I did see that recently. Oh, I made, I, I made it. What, Bill, look at this thing. What is that? Um, the Gatorkin Village. Are you ready to visit the Gatorkin Village? I, I guess I am. I will get to to Sprite Sting. <laughs> the the sting that you didn't know about, Sprite Sting. <laughs> In a second here. Hold on, we got some dialogue. Slimy, what are they doing? Oh my god, Slimy's actually out in the open. Okay, I can't see the video again. Okay, alright, that's weird, okay. I wonder if it has, okay, hold on. Let me uh, fix that on our end here. Because, I mean, everything's good here. Yeah, and I don't have any indication of the stream stopping, so it's, I don't really know what's going on there. Just, that's alright, yeah, if I, mean, I have to keep doing it, it's fine. I don't mind it, we just have to take right. a pause. Can you see now? Oops. Uh, hold on. Oops. Yep, I can see it. And you can see your own screen. All right, here we go. So, guys, you're sl remember, you're slimy. I am slimy. All right. This is a squamite ritual. My body slamming bird. See those ornamentations in their dress? Those are for spiritual purposes. What, he knows them? Spiritual. Yeah. See, spiritual. They're a sign of remorse. These gator kin must be trying to make amends for something. I'll, I'll be the chief. Bring yeah. out the gift. The gift. Oh, boy. I'm... Oh, remember he got kidnapped in the ungrave bird. That's right. <laughs> the fake sting. The fake. So yeah, speaking of sting. <laughs> <laughs> Let go of me. But while I'm here, can you tell me where you got those feathers? Okay, the ungrave bird. Cut out the gift's heart and throw it in the pool. What? Oh, dear lord. <laughs> Dios mio. <laughs> I don't think either of us are the lounger. Yeah. I'll, I'll be the lounger, I guess. Um, okay. Not the problem, chief. He doesn't have a heart. <gasps> He's cold-blooded. <laughs> Excuse me. I've got a heart of darkness, you fools. You know, that's a the good call. Oh, sorry. I've seen is. You know, Russ, that's a good call. Maybe this is the Skinner section of the game. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we can't let them do this. Let's go. Why do we care about Neon Gravebird all of a sudden? Seriously. All right. That's you. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm trying to. Okay. Stop. Oh, yeah, gotta get this right. Okay. Stop, you skelly hated scumbags, brother. It's not him you want. It's me. It's us, dude. Neon Gravebird, I'm sorry. We got so pumped when we were smacking the jungle down. Wait, we smacked the jungle. Okay. We celebrated too hard and didn't see them come for you. What? These gators must have captured you for what we did to their jungle. What did we do with the jungle? Am I missing something here? I don't think we did anything. Attack the jungle? Are you boys okay? We won't be okay until you unleash that wrestler. Yeah, this is between you, me, my brother here, and the jungle. Oh, brother. I'm here, Dr. Jones. <laughs> okay. That's not what I meant. You fools. We don't give a rip what you did out there. We captured this surfer goth because our spirit well told us to. Ah, oh, a message. What does it say? It says, when no words come, your world is in danger. The only thing that will make me talk is a stranger. Same thing as before. And it looks like these guys aren't the strangers we need. Hmm. That's usually some hidden... Oh, I gotta get my glasses here. <laughs> That's usually some hidden meaning with gator can riddles. Chop my tail off and call me a newt. The spirit well used to give us daily guidance. Now it just repeats the same message. Mm. Wait, maybe it's what the stranger does. 
There's nothing in this riddle about a sacrifice, you bloodthirsty legartos. Allow the south of the border savage to solve this mystery for you without bloodshed. What do you propose? If we can fix your spirit well, you have to give Neon Gravebird back unharmed. You have yourself a deal, outsiders. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hold on. Let's see. Wait, is it, you can, can't see it again? Oh, yeah. No, I got it. What are you thinking, brother? I think we have to get to the bottom of this well. Or under it. Isn't that really the same? Pretty thing? much, yeah, now that you're saying that. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. You aren't suggesting we jump in, are you? No, but I bet we can get a closer look if we go through those bright light caves. Come on, Hermano! Explore the bright light caves. The entrance is in somewhere because you took it away too quickly. Alright, I'll find it. Anyway, what were we saying about, um, Sting stuff? Okay, so we had talked about that Nitro that your friend went to. Um, what else did we? All right, so let's just ma say more things about Sting. Like, let me ask you this. Were you surprised? To, first off, were you surprised when WCW was bought by WWE? Did you actually think that we would see Sting, or you were like, no, nah, probably not? Um, I honestly didn't think he'd go to WWE. Mm -hmm. I, I really didn't. I thought, you know, maybe... I mean, looking back on it now, like, I, I didn't even think of it at the time, but looking back on it now, I probably thought he might have retired. Maybe go on, do other things. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it took, like, 13 years to finally get him there. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he wasn't, he the, he's the last one. He was the last one. But I will say this. When he did debut, that was executed really, really well, I thought. Because at the time, and, and you could correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. At the time, I don't know if it was reported he was going or not. I think and then, it was just like a lot of uncertainty of what yeah. did WWE actually buy, really. Right. And then, you know, when he does have the moment, you know, that he makes it is this huge ovation, probably one of the loudest pops he ever got of his career. And what they did right, I thought, one of the rare times that I think you and I might agree with WWE booking. Sure. Well, let me can, can I can I say this before so that way you're not yeah. under the false assumption that I watched a lot of his WWE stuff. So okay, there yeah, was, yeah. There, here, I'll tell you what I saw. I saw, there's a, um, is that a My Little Pony? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta fight a pony. <laughs> I saw the documentary that I guess WWE put out called Behind the Mask or something like that. Um, oh, oh, oh what's going on there? Was that the, that wasn't the one with the warrior, or about the warrior, was it? No, no, it's, it's, no, it's an hour documentary, it's on the WWE Network, mm -hmm. and it's, you're like, Sting remembering some of his past stuff, but then it also goes ahead and, oh, I see what it's, I was like, why isn't any of my stuff here? Um, it shows, uh, what, you know, what the WWE debut looked like, and so I, I saw the day, a little bit of the debut, um, I saw, I saw clips of the WrestleMania match because that was part of it because, but because it was like an only an hour long DVD, right. it was only clips of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that might've been it. So very, very limited knowledge. All right. But it, cause... it didn't look, the WrestleMania didn't look terrible, by the way. Because... So. How they did it, as far as just 
appearances is like he debuted at Survivor Series and he didn't come back until the whole like authority came back mm -hmm. but it wasn't every week so they had the idea that hey Sting's an attraction you know but the difference is between like the way they did it with Sting to say like a Brock Lesnar is you kind of knew Sting wasn't going to win a championship at that point right because Sting wasn't that type of a guy and, and he even said that in the press conference after the show which I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk about a little later he never was a political guy he just went along with whatever now let me ask you this do you think that's part of the reason maybe his run in WWE wasn't great probably that's a valid argument Very valid argument. So anyway, you said so. I didn't see any of the press conference. I'm going to tell you that as well. I didn't see any of the press conference. Yeah. But we'll yeah we'll talk about that later. Let's um continue with our our sting moments here. I mentioned Joker Sting earlier, mm -hmm. and I it's just I think that was a very important part of his career because I mean the man was known for mostly being mute up until that point like right but this showed him like his like a true character that he could be charismatic with his voice and and promos like yeah you kind of got it with surfer sting but it was different like surfer sting i feel people are just like oh it's corny that's okay though but joker sting i thought was great yeah I mean, I, I didn't watch it as much as you did, but yeah. from what I you know watched, it was really entertaining. Mm -hmm. And it was like, kind of like in the right time, because it was, what was it, like a year or two years after the Dark Knight movie had come out? Yes. Yeah, so, pretty, pretty, pretty short turnaround, yeah. Consume. Yeah, so, and, and that was, that's always one of the things you and I have always talked about is how when Vince was in charge how like it takes him five years to hop onto yeah. something that was you know big in pop culture right like Where, Pirate Paul Birchall exactly whereas with any other person place you know they could get it within a year or two years mm -hmm. now did you I want to go back now that you're saying that to Crow Sting, and because I guess I thought of it because it's based on the Crow. Mm -hmm. uh, did you think, watching it, that he wouldn't be an active wrestler at that time, like for a long time? I wasn't sure. I was just like, "Oh, Sting's in the top of the building," <laughs> you know. I guess that's where he lives now. <laughs> <laughs> So, I I wasn't sure. Like, you know, I, I obviously as a kid, you know, you're not reading dirt sheets and the internet wasn't as broad, you know, as it is now where basically every home in the world with a connection could go to the internet. Yeah. So I wouldn't have known that he was injured or he needed time off. And then it's it's interesting because thinking back, I'm just like, I don't know how, how if I really thought that he would be not wrestling for like a year and a half, which was a lot of the mystique is like, oh, you know, what, state, what side is Sting on? And all that. Mm -hmm. And then the match at Starcade, because I feel like that has to get brought up. Yes, of course. Which I think I they're won't... kind of openly saying, I think they're like openly saying now that they're openly saying by not, but not really openly saying that Hogan's the one that messed it up somehow. Like, to this day, like, I don't know. Because it's like, because I watched it happen on pay-per-view. It's one of the rare WCW pay-per-views I ordered. Mm -hmm. I watched it happen, 
and it's a regular three count. Yeah. And it's like, um, okay. Was that how, like, I guess that's how it ends. And then, you know, Brett's there and he's like, I'm not going to let this happen again. You know, with the whole attempt of a screw job. Which was weird because, again, like you said, it's a clean pin. Right. So what <laughs> What are you stopping from happening there, Brett? So it's like, because, like, so many years later, it's like, oh, it was Nick Patrick's fault. Oh, it's Sting's fault. It's Hogan's fault. You know, at the end of the day, who really knows who the blame is to go to? Mm-hmm. Or how that match ended. Oh, it seems like all fingers seem to point to Hogan at the very end when you put everything together. I mean, it could... And, and I'm not defending Hogan here. But believe me, I'm, I'm not defending Hogan in this arm. But the same could be said for whoever set up the match. For, you know, whoever came up with the ending. You know, there's so many people you could blame. Right, sure. I also personally blame Nick Patrick, too, because I remember they had, they, they, I, 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 I wish I remember who it was, but, <coughs> oh, no, <coughs> I got burned by blue fire. Anyway. Oh, no. Anyway, uh, I don't remember who it was, and they said, they asked him, like, oh, what do you think, of, what is your recollection of Starcade 1997? You know, on the fast count, but, you know, was it supposed to be a fast count? All of that. Mm-hmm. And he kind of was like, I don't, he's like, I don't, you know, there was so much going on. I, I don't, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing. I don't know if this is exactly what he said, but right. the idea was that, oh, you know, this, I've gone through so many matches in my life that I, you know, I, I don't really remember. And I get that. Like, sometimes I think people... Not overrate. That's not the word I'm looking for. People will think that, oh, do you remember, like, to a wrestler, oh, do you remember when you had this match in SummerSlam 1999? Mm-hmm. I was there. And if the wrestler says, actually, I don't really remember that one that much, I right. kind of believe them unless it was a big moment. Because let's face it, these guys are wrestling, especially WWE. AEW has a lighter schedule, and so did TNA. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, Ring of Honor, too. Um, but Nick Patrick, I would argue, this was his biggest role in the biggest match he's ever been a part of. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't buy that you don't know what happened that night. You don't, that, I'm sorry, that you don't remember what happened. Like, the other thing is, like, you know, and he did work a long time. He even worked in WWE after they got, you know, after WCW got bought. Yeah. Um. But, but like, yeah. what would you say are his top, like, what, okay, if it's not Hogan's thing, what are his other top two matches that he's been a part of? Oh, my God. Uh, hey. That's what, <laughs> do you see what I'm saying, though? Like, that's yeah, the most major, I do. And unless it was something tragic happened, like, I don't know, and I, you know, I don't wish any ill will on the man at all, but, I, you know, if he's, you know, if a, a family member or a friend died that same day or hours mm-hmm. earlier, he had a wife and found out that she had cancer, like, yes, that would 100% make me forget right. about anything wrestling related. Oh, but, absolutely. But I don't, to my knowledge, that did not happen. Yeah. And then, I guess another one that I want to point out as well. And it, it just seems like with Sting, he get he ends up, and it is not his fault at all. He ends up in the worst situations, and he does like it, it's not his fault. Yeah. The other one that I think about, not all not all the time, but I do think like when we're talking Sting. Sure. Is the match with Jeff Hardy? Oh yeah. Because pay-per-view, main event match, you know, Jeff Hardy is high as I don't know what. 
and because this was, if I remember correctly, this was like the rematch from when Sting won the title. Mm -hmm. I didn't see this live when it happened. I didn't either. I, I don't think I would have gotten that show. But I read the report the next day after work. And it was like, oh, Bischoff got in the ring, whispered something into this thing. And then you see the video, even to this day. And it's like, oh, man, you know, like, Sting is, like, at times he's like the unluckiest person in the world. And But the one thing I remember more than anything from that match is when he's walking up the ramp after that match. And you can hear the fans chanting, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. And Sting's like, I agree with you. I agree with you. And that's like the only time that I could ever think of where I saw Sting legitimately mad. Sure. So, you know, if that, that's just the thing with Sting is, you know, he has the big moments like, you know, Star K97, beating Flair, all of that. But at the same time, he ends up in moments that live in infamy, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, this guy can't catch a break. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, you know what, I won, I, there's part of me that was very curious, because I was thinking about the, uh, the Jeff, the Jeff Hardy thing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as, when I was thinking of Sting Memories, I'm like, now, I don't think he was scheduled for that pay-per-view, meaning Jeff Hardy. But if he was there, do you think he's even saying anything to Sting that day? Or do you think, like, he's a bad memory of Sting and he's like, I want to just stay away from, from him today? I don't think he... I would think he didn't have a bad memory of Sting. No, Sting I, having I think... a bad memory of him. Oh. Um... Maybe, but Sting's the type of guy that's, you know, willing to forgive and forget. I agree with that. So I don't think he holds a grudge. It, it's not like it's, you know, kind of going back to Nick Patrick. It's This was not the biggest match of Sting's career. True. Yeah, no one's thinking about... Yeah, I agree with that. So... Um, I'm just trying to think of... Oh, well, obviously, the the debut at AEW. Yeah, let's such go with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never saw that coming. I think I just went back nah. to the beginning. <laughs> I'll go back. <laughs> but yeah, because it's like, like, there were so many, like, things. Because we have to remember, this is during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. They're in Jacksonville every week. The last thing on my mind, as you're facing another My Little Pony. Well, it reset because I exited, so now I gotta do all, right, all that right. again. The last thing I think on anybody's mind is, oh, Sting's gonna show up in AEW. Yeah, because we at that point we're kind of like, will he show up? Maybe, but it's the you know, how is how does Sting fit into things in AEW? Mm -hmm. It wasn't exactly like. You know, you look at the action in AEW, and you don't necessarily think of, you know, an older wrestler that had that kind of style, like, as Sting, like. Mm-hmm. And then he debuts, and he gets paired up with Darby Allen, and honestly, I think it's the best thing to ever happen with Darby Allen. Because I, 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 I I'm not going to speak on behalf of Darby because I've never met the guy, but I think Sting was probably a father figure to Darby. Mm -hmm. And, like, they just worked. I don't know what it is. It's just they had that chemistry that you can't explain. You know? Yeah. They just worked wonders. Yeah, I definitely agree and with that. And the other thing that made it great is you didn't have to see Sting every week. He didn't need to be there every week. Yeah. 
I feel like with oh, oh. I didn't realize that the horse when he gets hit gets a makes ah. it's a little neigh. <laughs> what was I gonna say about Sting? Um, yeah, no, you're right. I think Sting helped him out a lot, and I don't mean to jump ahead, but to be honest with you, that if, if the next time I want to see Sting is I want him there when when Darby wins the belt. Mm-hmm. That would make the best sense. It really would. All right, so let's talk about the. Um, let's go in a little bit more about the, uh, the pay per view, I guess, or or not the pay per view, but the lead up. I guess. So, all right, what'd you think? Young Bucks, right team, wrong team, and if it's a wrong team, who do you put there? Okay, so we're gonna pull a little bit behind the curtain on this to everyone that's listening to this or watching this. Mm -hmm. You and I had a conversation back in, it was, I think it was a little bit after Sting had announced that Revolution was going to be his final match. Right. I had said at the time, why not make it him and Darby? Mm -hmm. You were the one who said, why not have it be the Young Bucks? Yeah. Mostly and I said that because Sting had only worked tag team matches since he's been yeah. in the company. I'm like, why would he why would he change that now? Right. So and and you convinced me, you know, and this was before the Bucks got into the picture. At the end of the day, I think they were the right team, the right guys to be in that last match. Mm -hmm. And I don't think... See, if you were going to have to pick another team, the only other team I could think of would be FTR, but it would have to be Babyface versus Babyface. Right. With the Bucks, they're great chicken shit heels. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's who you kind of need for that kind of a final match, are chicken shit heels. More and to me, more specifically, you need someone that's gonna bump around. Yes, yes. So, I think they got the right team, the right opponents for Sting's last match. I thought the build-up was done well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, do I think they needed the tag titles? Probably not but it's a nice little caveat to add into it. Right. And to me, I, I you know, it's funny, because before this, I was saying to you that, because we talked about, you know, I, like, I think Saturday night or, yeah, Saturday night we talked, and I was, no, mm -hmm. no, you weren't around Saturday night. I, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday morning, I was like, all right, what do you think? Do you think the Bucks win? Do you think Sting and Darby win? And... I mean, I think we both said the Bucks, and then I'm watching this match, and I'm like, no, I think Sting has to win now. It's, yeah. It's too, no, I think Sting has to win this now. And you know what? I did not have a problem with that, mm -hmm. because, and I'm going to go back to something that you had said a few weeks prior to the match, which is, it's okay if, you know, they went against what the tradition is, is, you know, all oh, your final match, you have to lose. Yeah. And I really think the Bucks had no problem losing that match to Sting. Oh, absolutely. I don't think so either. I mean, yes, we've heard, you know, the, the political stuff, the backstage stuff, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to people that they respect, like Sting, they had no problem losing that match. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the match itself goes, oh gosh, there's so many like elements of why it was so good, I thought. Yeah. Um, the build-up, obviously, was the first step. The, the next thing is the fact that they made it a tornado tag match. 
if it's a regular tag match, I don't think it's as good as it ended up being. Yeah. The third, and there's two other factors. One, the commentary. JR, with a broken hip. Does he have a broken hip? I don't he had a, I don't know if he had it fixed or because he said like he had a broken hip I don't know if it got fixed or not but he Tony Schiavone and Excalibur were really good on commentary they really were mm -hmm. and I think the final thing that made me really enjoy this match was the fans like they picked the right city, the right venue to have this match. A place that Sting is familiar with. And you were going to have people come from all over the U.S. to be at that match. Yeah. Come hell or high water. So it's really those four elements for me that just came together. And I'm like, oh, my God, what a match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. I I really enjoyed it. What'd you think of the um, the, oh the entrance? I liked that. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. When when Bleach Blonde Sting came out, I in my mind I was like, "Wow, Sting really let himself go for I'm, this." You match. know what? I'm with you. I'm like, <laughs> I I actually thought it was Sting. <laughs> but no, I like that his sons got involved. Um, and it made sense because of the attack from yeah. a few weeks ago. <laughs> and and I know you probably didn't watch the Zero Hour. I watched a little of show. it. I watched a little of it. Did you watch where Tony Schiavone was interviewing David Crockett? Yes. I liked that because Crockett's like, you don't mess with family. You just don't. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God bless you, David Crockett. <laughs> hey, what about all the people that came out for Sting? Yeah. Steambo came out, was there, and... Magnum TA, Nikita Cola. Scotty Riggs looks in tremendous shape. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know... Nash was wanted to go to this. But did he? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I got Legends contract hey, from WWE. I got, yeah. Hey, I just got to... I can't... I can't not hang out with my boy Hunter. You know, hey. Um... I don't believe... I, I almost don't believe Nash because... First off, number one... Why would you have to be in the crowd? Why is that, oh, the only way I can watch is be in the crowd? Right. It, it, it's, or here's something even better. Like, why did you have, feel the need to have to say something? Like, if he didn't say anything, we first off, we wouldn't even be talking about it right now. Yeah. And I think if, I think if Bischoff, didn't have as big of a problem with the AEW product oh, as he does. Just, yeah. he, he'd have been there. There's a there's a few other people that I think could have been there if sure. Like, but then again, I, I but there's think... there's see, but there are some people that were there that I don't. I think were there, but weren't seen on camera. Like, I thought I saw a picture of Diamond Dallas Page there. I know I saw a picture of Luger the day after the show. See, that's the one that should have been seen on camera to me. Yeah. I mean, the dude's confined to a wheelchair. I guess, yeah. But still, yeah, I agree with you. He should have been on TV. Or at least, like, I don't know, for... Like, maybe... Well, I mean, again, this could be after they went off the air. Like, when Sting goes up the ramp, there's Luger, and they mm -hmm. have a hug. But... Right. I don't know if that even. I don't know what don't happened know. off the air. I don't. I know this thing was still talking when they were off the air. And you know what? Here's the thing. I can't blame. 
no one should blame AEW for that. Are people blaming them for I, I mean, nothing again. People I, blame I, AEW I, for I, everything. Exactly. Like, I haven't seen it, but you know there are some that will. The thing is, you have, you know, for a pay-per-view. I mean, I've never run a pay-per-view in my life. Unless, you know, college championship wrestling does one. But, <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> but when you do a pay-per-view, this is what I've read. You have to end at whatever time, yeah. you know, that you're supposed to end. So the show is supposed to go off air, like, right at midnight or before midnight. So... When Darby Allen's like, okay, we've got three minutes till the paper, you know, till we go off the air. I'm like, Sting's going to have to talk really quick. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, they showed the, you know, the, the credit. And it's like, okay, are we going to get it on YouTube now? Because I kind of wanted to see the rest of that speech. Yeah. What's the answer to that, by the way? <laughs> well, they did post a video after... I think it was like the next morning of the rest of the speech. So. Okay. But, yeah. Like, I'm just like, yeah, you know someone's going to blame AEW for cutting off Sting at the middle of the speech. You know. They got to go by rules. Yep. That's what they got to do. TV has rules. So... Let's talk about the match itself. Um, obviously, there is a lot of controversy with some glass spots, apparently. Yeah, I, I didn't have a problem with. It. I didn't, but I could, but I could see the argument. Yeah, I do. Which, I do too. Which, weirdly, I don't see the argument with the clip everyone seems to be showing. Which is the Darby Allen? Right. I have a problem. The problem that they should be having with is the, um, the one there that's, that's in the corner, and I think Sting yeah. goes through it because I'm like that mm -hmm. one could easily have gone into a fan's eyes, exactly. for sure. And again, I could see the argument there. And then, <laughs> I now that I'm thinking about it, the part where Flair comes in to protect. Oh. Okay, back to... Yeah, we got some game time. here. Yep. <laughs> for, for once, like a half look, hour. I, look, well, I had to go to a cave, Bill, in case you didn't notice. I, I noticed. <laughs> Say, do you think we could use one of those colored sheets from the chest, brother? Work the try. What color sheets from one of the chests? What is he talking about? I didn't see anything. I, we don't have a sheet. I don't give a sheet. <laughs> All right, I guess we got to no. sheets. What I was going to say was um, the part where Flair comes in to protect Sting. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to be like, there's broken glass over in the corner. I wonder <laughs> how Flair is handling this. <laughs> I'm wondering if this is a sheet right here. But, Blue sheet. There we go. Oh, there we go. But as far as the match, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It was, for me, it was a mix of a little bit of nostalgia with what we've got today. Mm -hmm. And it was a great send off to a guy that, like you said, everybody likes. Yeah. Oh, you know? so. And, and then the thing. And obviously, we're not going to mention... Or maybe we'll talk about it. I don't know. After the show. Oh, hold on. Karay? Karay! This looks like the altar in the lizard village. Hmm, excuse me. Yeah, but, but look, the magic stone is missing, brother. Do you think it's related to the spirit well? See, let's keep looking. All right. So people on Twitter after the show, because I, you know, me, I always go on Twitter. Uh, is it an X now? You're, you're right. <laughs> um, they were saying it's the greatest AEW pay-per-view. 
I'm going to be honest with you, I only watched the Sting match, so I can't vouch for the rest of it. Yeah. I'm going to say they've got a valid argument. I'll just say that. Okay. I think they have a valid argument. Okay. Because there were some really good matches on that show as well. I'm not going to make you go watch it now, but... Right. If you ever decide to, like, oh, I'm bored and... There's nothing on. Yeah, I'll put something in the background. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, and then Tony Khan comes out during, like, after the pay-per-view goes over. He's like, this is the greatest pay-per-view ever. <laughs> I'm like, Tony, Tony, you're a good human being. Don't, don't, don't go too far. Right. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the press conference and what was talked about there? Okay. So... Basically, with Sting, one of the questions was about, you know, like, well, did he have any say in anything? And he said that he didn't. And that I'm going to believe. Okay. He never had any say, any, you know, disagreeing as far as what the outcome of a match should be or could be. Um... He thanked Tony for everything that he did. And that's really it. Oh, I think you just put the blue sheet back up. I think I did too. Yeah. Oh, wait, but is that good? Because I don't. No, no you kind of place yourself. the sheet blue. Yeah, and then I think the next. Yeah, this is the puzzle that we I have to figure out now. Yeah. Not... Oh, no, Machacho Man's almost dead. He is dead. He's got zero out of 1,281 HP. So, um, the other thing that they mentioned is because, you know, Sting's retiring, is they're vacating the tag titles. All right, yeah. And they're going to have a tournament. Go ahead. No, that they're going to have a tag tournament. You know, they're going to have a tournament to crown the next champion. And my guess is the finals will be at the next pay-per-view, which will be in April. Okay. And I know how much you love the idea of AEW going to monthly pay-per-view. Ugh, talk about turning me off of the product. The Dynasty, only, why? The only positive about that that I saw is how far away the next pay-per-view is like as far as date wise goes because mm -hmm. I think they said it's April 21st is the date okay so and I'm gonna pull up my calendar here that is one two three four five. That's six and a half weeks away. Okay. So in six and a half weeks, you have plenty of time to set up what you want to do for the next pay-per-view. I, I, I'm with you. I don't think they should do monthly pay-per-views because mm -hmm. that's what made them so unique, so different. Right. So... Anyway, so so let's see. What else haven't we touched on yet? This part's hard, by the way. I don't know if you're, you're paying attention at all what's going oh, on. Oh, I have but, been. But, so apparently... All right, hold on one second. Simon, Simon's being a pain in the ass. What, what's going on? Simon's being a pain in the ass. Simon? Yeah, remember... From earlier in the game, you know oh. what Simon says. Oh, that's right. No, what? Is, so it looks like I have to just. No, no, no. Oh, shit. Uh, I have to go and try to get through this by placing these blocks. So I have a blue sheet now. So I have to get rid of a blue. Probably there. Probably right here. Wait, what? I thought I had the blue sheet. Did I leave it back no, where it was before? 
Yeah, but won't you have to get the red sheet out as well? Unless there's a way. All right, here, let me try this. Take sheet. Can I go down here and get somehow go around? I mean, you could try. <sighs> I'm going to wind up dying in this cave again. I don't have infinite healing things here. Anyway, uh, what were you saying? Um, what was I saying? No, I was... No, I was just trying to think, like, what to do here that would fix this whole well, we, situation. Well, we need to find more sheets. That's what it is. And yeah. I, I don't see one... I don't see another treasure chest around here. Try unless going down. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, unless maybe it's in another area. I mean, Can that I is a possibility. I'm going to go all the way right and see if it's in another area. Yeah. Yeah, like it's probably here somewhere. Yeah, because I haven't been in this part at all. Anyway, so so so, the press conference. What else did he have to say for himself? Yeah, I definitely um, haven't been in this area. You know, I didn't really see much, so I can't really say you know like what was said and everything. But did that do? No, yeah. that didn't do. I anything. saw blue around here, so I thought maybe something would happen. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm saving. I don't know why, because I would argue I was probably probably in a worse spot than I was about a half hour ago. Right. <laughs> this is where I am now. Um. So, okay, any more... What other stinging stuff should we talk about? How about okay, how his, his on and off... Uh, his on and off... Well, no, it's not even on and off again. His, his constant friendship with Lex Luger, which I... Like that they would team up and Lex Luger was a bad guy, huh? Right. Okay, you know what? I, 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 I do have something. Great. Uh, a friend of mine texted me this question yesterday. And as soon as I saw... Oh, you're going out of the rainforest, by the way. That's all right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and get healing items and try this again. Okay. Um. So he asked me this question. As soon as I read the question, I was like, this is a question for Jim. Okay. Between Sting and The Undertaker, who do you think would come out of retirement first? Oh, The Undertaker. In fact, he already did once. Well, I know, but I'm. But now that both are retired, uh, definitely Undertaker, because he's. There'll be something's gonna happen. Some sorty money is gonna happen, and he'll come back for that. That's pretty much what we both said. Like, I mean, we didn't say the Saudi money thing, but we both said Undertaker would be the one. Like, that would come he won't right go, out of Yeah, it. he won't go away now. Like, that's the thing. That's the other thing I have to respect on Sting so much is, unlike a lot of these guys who just won't shut up after they retire, I could see Sting kind of not, you know, not starting a podcast and you know, not really doing that kind of stuff, like how Undertaker has. Yeah, I, I could see Sting just being a grandparent. Yeah. You know? He has grandkids. Why not go and be a grandparent? Mm -hmm. He said, my, my friend said, you know, Taker would have done anything for Vince. Mm -hmm. Like, if Vince needed Taker to do something, He'd do it on the snap of a finger. Yeah. Which I absolutely agree with. So, but now that Vince is no longer in charge, you know, maybe, un unless the Saudi money comes involved, like you said. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I mean, the guy won't, he's, I feel like he doesn't go away anyway, so what would stop him from making another appearance? Yeah. Agreed. By the I, way, I definitely... by the way, that's one thing I definitely have changed my tune to. By the way, because kind of staying on topic of Sting, is, um, like I think if you were to ask me, 
like who who's better overall Sting or The Undertaker? I would have said The Undertaker like ten to fifteen years ago, mm. but I feel like unlike like Sting, Kate had had this great run in AEW and went out the right way. I'm saying Sting now. I've switched on that. You might be onto something there. You know why? Because he hasn't. Well, I mean, I guess it's too early to tell, but. Unlike the, I'm looking for a store, by the way, in case anyone's wondering what I'm trying to do here. Um, right. I, oh, that's right. He's in jail or whatever. Um, <laughs> being sacrificed. Oh, maybe this guy's the store now. Let me say. Nope. So Undertaker came. So to me, the, the last Undertake time Undertaker should have wrestled was when he lost to Brock Lesnar. That was it. Done. Sure. That's that was his swan song, but instead he kept coming back for no reason, and then you see his stuff. The problem here is that the Undertaker, I believe, thinks that Mark Calloway is interesting, and mm-hmm. he's not at all. He is definitely not an interesting person at all. Mark Calloway is right, and I think by him, like he, by him not. Like, I, he just took away so much of his legacy, I think, in the last, you know, couple of years that Sting, on the other hand, and I know it's early because he literally just retired a few Two days, days ago. ago. <laughs> yeah, but I just don't see it happening. But then again, CM Punk's back in WWE, so who in the world knows? Um, oh, you know what? There was one thing I do remember now that I'm thinking about from that press conference. Sting said, and I don't even remember if it was a question that was asked, but he said during the press conference that he stopped taking steroids in 1990. Okay. And I'm I'm back actually, it, aren't I? And I'm trying to think back to you know. 80, you know, 88, 89, 90, thinking of, like, the pictures and the videos and stuff. Honestly, I would not have been able to figure out that he was on steroids. Not at that time. No, I don't think so. I don't think I would either. But you could tell, you know, if he was on him once he got off, he still stayed in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Like he didn't, like, like the 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 side effects of using steroids never was an issue with mm-hmm. Sting. Unlike other people, like famous people, like Mark McGuire is a perfect example. Um, there there was a old football player, Lyle Alzado, who was a massive steroid user in like the seventies and eighties, and then he got cancer and passed away in like 91 92 and he looked like he looked ridiculously skinny you know mm-hmm. but with sting i i could have never you know if you had said sting was on steroids i was like you could have fooled me yeah i mean i feel like there's like there's a couple of guys like that probably admitted that they had done steroids and i'm just like really hmm. like at least, at then, least with Sting. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, at least with Sting, it's like he never hit it, mm-hmm. or you know, because I don't think it was ever, because I don't think people would have thought, you know, oh, Sting was on steroids, you know, where, and I, and, I, and I'm gonna use a baseball reference, Andy Pennant, okay, who was a pitcher for the Yankees for years, like when when they had that whole thing of like who did and who didn't and his name was on the list and it was like the next day Pettit was like yeah I did I I used steroids and for me like I kind of forgave him right then and there right you know because it's like okay he admitted to it right there whereas with other people it's taken them years to admit or they will never admit so, like, when I read that, I was like, oh, okay, Sting used steroids at one point. 
okay, there you go. So. I don't know where I'm going here, by the way. I'm trying to find the stupid village, and I have no idea where it is. All right, let me get the video. I'm, I'm going to watch the video. All right, watch some of the video, and people just have to deal with me running around. And now people have now skipped like five minutes into after the video. Yeah, they could have missed some important stuff in some five minutes. Important information. I'm like, what are these? These have to be something. I mean, they're glowing. Oh my god. Did you see what's happened? What? I hit. I, I checked out a plant and the plant almost killed me. Maybe it's a Venus flytrap. Yeah, so you want to go where they start doing the colors. Oh, Samantha's here. So I'm going to try to hook in Samantha um, because she was there live. So we could have got a live, yeah, she was. Live, she sting, was there. live sting report. Um, all right, Samantha, go on. Um, try to go on uh, on Skype. And I'm going to try to plug you in here with a shared screens. Are you, let me see if she signed in. I don't know how can I even tell. I don't even know how to do this. All right, let me see. What All right, folks, doing? hold on here. <laughs> see, uh, this Samantha, is why you... Samantha gonna, go is going to get on Skype now, and then we're going to try to plug her in here to talk about um, Sting's final match. Which, thank God, because I don't know where I'm going in this freaking game. In fact, this is going to be great, because I can talk to Samantha, and then you can look up what I'm supposed to be doing or where the village is. Oh, believe me, I'm, I'm looking. Oh, I think I found an exit. This is good. Probably what I should have been doing I don't the whole know. time. You know what? I don't know if you can have two people on. If that's the case, then I might have to have you jump off while I talk to her. <laughs> And that works again, because you can look and see what we're supposed to do, but I'll, we'll see. Let's see how this works out. I don't think I've ever had to try this before. Oh, I see a question mark. That's good. That's a start. But I think I'm supposed to go the opposite of the question mark. Let me uh, write her back real quick here. I'm even afraid to check things out now because last time that plant almost killed me. <laughs> also, if you can, can you look up on Skype to see if there's a way to do a group call to have her get on here with both of us? That'd be great, but if not, I get it. Oh, you just hit add participant and then. Okay, great. Find whatever you're looking for. All right, hold on, let me see. She might have just wrote me, actually. Oh, there she is. Okay, so where am I saying add participant? It's going to be on the bottom left next to record. Oh, actually, you're. Oh, you got to minimize. Okay. Um, okay, make it bigger. Okay. I mean, that's, I? that's what's bigger. Um, that's mute. Yeah. No, go. Okay, hit the S for Skype. The S? Oh, oh, for Skype. Okay. All right, folks, bear with us here and then go um, to her. Can I just add her to call here? Hold on. Yeah, hit the dots. Okay, okay try the other dots down here at the bottom. Uh, uh. Let me see what happens okay. if I just try calling, if it'll just jump her right on here. Okay. Mm. 
Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome. You're Good, on live. How are you? You're on live right now, but although I think Bill got kicked off because I don't know. Bill, you're not still there, are you? We're trying to figure out how to do a group uh, a group call here, but it might have to be me talking to you for a little bit, and then I'll have to go back to him. So. Okay. All right, let me go back to him real quick, and then I'll come back to you. Okay. So Folks, this is the uh, the amazingness of live. Hey, let's figure this out. All right, I'll talk <laughs> to you a little bit. Bye. Oh, I can now hit resume call. And now I believe Bill is back here now. Hello? Yep, he's here. All right, so unless you were able to figure it out, I'm going to have to talk to Samantha by myself here for a little bit. And then I'll, I'll bump you back on. So you could just listen in the thing and enter in the chat room while you, you look at things going on there. Okay. But I do want to get her live thing perspective, that's why. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, so I'll, I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right, okay. Hello. Hello. Okay, so you're. I'm about to do a share screen with you, so you can see what's going on on my end. So, okay. ladies and gentlemen, this is Samantha, and she was fortunate enough to actually be at Sting's last match. Now. Samantha, let me ask you this before we start. Like, how did that all come about of you going to this event? So back in December, when they did the pre-sale, I got tickets for my sister and myself. And then, like, um, they at the time, they were only selling two tickets at a time. And so we had several other friends who went, but they could we couldn't sit together because we couldn't purchase tickets together. So we were all in the arena together. We were just spread out through the arena and then um because i do aw media calls um i have the ability to put in for credentials to uh try to attend um to try to attend uh live events and so i put in for it wasn't really expecting anything because i knew everybody would try to go to that especially sure. if there was the chance that sting was gonna be in the scrum afterwards. <laughs> so uh, Thursday before the media call, I got an email and found out that I had been credentialed. And so um, I, my sister and I had already booked a hotel previously just because it, Greensboro is only like an hour and a half from us, but we knew the pay-per-view was going to end late. And then if I was going to be doing the media scrum, it was going to be even, <laughs> even sure. later. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so before, um, before you continue, you, can you see yeah. my screen? Yes, I can. And you can hear. Great. Okay. Just want to make sure. Go ahead. Yes. Continue, please, then. Uh, but yeah, so um, I found out about, so I found out about the scrum, and then um, I, um, so I sat, but I still sat with my sister, because usually they give you, because they give you a ticket with it as well, but I was like, well, I don't want my sister, A, to sit, sit by herself, and B, we watched Sting together, like, through, like we both became, when we be both became fans, um, we, we would watch Sting together, so I was like, I want to watch Sting's last match with her. So I told that to the to the guy when I was getting my credentials, and he was like, well, this is where we're going to meet. He was like, try to be over there as quickly as possible once the show ends. Um, so I did get to sit with my sister uh, for the whole pay-per-view, and then um, right after the match, I went to where we were supposed to meet, and then nobody was there yet. So I was able to, one of the little sections I could... Um, I could peek kind of through, like I could stand at the top. And so I watched the rest of the celebration afterwards when they brought up, you know, they brought all the wrestlers out and Sting continued to talk to um, the audience after it went off air and everything. So I got to catch all of that from a different section and then uh, go to the, to the media scrum afterwards. All right. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to have a bunch of questions for you now, Bill, I know is in the chat. So he'll be chatting with us. Cause unfortunately I don't, I thought it would be easier to figure out how to, have all three of us on um and really we're all going to be on here for like a half hour uh longer anyway um okay so bill i know you're giving me instructions i don't know if i'm going to be able to get back to that cave because i do legitimately want to go to a shop because that cave is destroying all of my health so i need to do something because i'm sure at the end of that there's going to be a boss battle so let's just hang out a little and 
talk about Sting. Now, Samantha, we were talking about Sting moments for the last, you know, um, hour and a half. What, give me a Sting moment from you, whether it's current or an older memory that you, you have of him. I think just like when I really got into um, when I really got into wrestling, I was um, it, I was definitely a WCW NWO fan, and so um, like I loved Wolfpack Sting. Was like that was like so I miss like Surfer Sting and all that. So I was so his first introduction to me that I really I mean obviously he I know he became Wolfpack Sting a little bit later, but that was Wolfpack Sting is who is like the first character that I really remember of his, and then like. So I love that stuff. I love Joker Sting, um, and then when just when I when I when I would have access to TNA, it was uh, TNA. I think we've talked about before. Sometimes I would have access to it, and then it would go. Then it would move channels, and I wouldn't have access to it for a while. Then it <laughs> yeah. would randomly come back. So I would get pieces here and there. Um, but I think just my favorite memory was obviously of just him arriving at AEW. Like it was just. It came at a winter is coming, so it was just a early December show. It was um, not something that I don't think most of us expected. I certainly didn't expect to ever see Sting wrestle again because he, you know, we were told that he would never wrestle again. Um, so I think just seeing that moment, and even in a moment where it was not that many fans because it was the pandemic era, it was still a really special thing. And I just think that the way they handled him over his. 29 matches technically 30 if you count his uh match with uh, muda um at his goodbye show uh so i think it was 30 matches overall but i think just the way they handled him they really handled him with the respect that he deserves and i'm so glad that he got to go out on his own terms especially after the way he was treated by wwe and then getting injured there and thinking he would never wrestle again. And then he got to come back and say, because we obviously we all know as wrestling fans that, you know, a lot of times wrestlers don't get to go out on their own terms. They are either forced out um, just by one for one reason or another. So for him to be able to, to be able to properly say goodbye, I think was really, really special. Mm -hmm. Bill, if you're, uh, I know that you're listening right now. I do need you to do me a favor. Help me get back to the village. I can't find it. So please find a map that shows me which direction to go to. In the meantime, um, yeah, we're talking about sting moments. How did you feel about the 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 match? How did you feel about the opponents being the young bucks? What what were your thoughts on all of that? Um, I was I was really happy that it was the young bucks. I think that was the correct call. Um, I think the young bucks. I think the reason he chose the because that's what I had heard was well when the match was when the rumor it was rumored that it was going to be the young bucks. I was like, well, that makes sense because I was like, the young bucks will take care of him. They will make sure that he looks good. <laughs> they will do. They will have no problem doing whatever it is that Sting wants to do. I'm sure they'll do it. And I think with the characters that they're playing now, where they're these super evil they're just basically living up to every internet criticism of them and they're having they're just leaning into it which i think is really fun it's i really enjoy these characters so i think this version of of them with sting i think this was the correct choice um i was hoping that sting would win um i would i was like because i wanted him to go out undefeated because i was like that's never gonna happen again no other wrestler is ever gonna <laughs> is never gonna retire undefeated so i was hoping that he would get that and i was like but i was like if they do lose i was like the bucks that makes sense because of the story they're telling that the mm. he would be there is 29 and one and all of that so i thought that i thought the match was really great like i loved how um they did the the promo before the or the video that they played um before he came out it was just like going through the journey of sting's career and then when it flashed up and I saw Surfer Sting for a second, I was like, wait a minute. And then it, it didn't take me long to realize. And I was like, oh, that's his son. And then we saw Wolfpack Sting. And I was like, oh, that I was like, that's the other son. And so I figured it out pretty quickly. And I thought that was, was just a really great touch to have them there and to have them as two of his most popular versions of himself. And to be able to be in the match with him and have that moment with their dad in the ring, I thought was really, really cool. I think, you know, Tony gets a lot of criticism and rightfully so with a lot of things, but he handles his veterans 
really well. He tries to give them respect and he honors what they've done for the business. And I think that that was very apparent, like that they wanted to not only make it special for Sting, but to make it special for Sting fans. And I think that like, I don't know that it could have been any more perfect than the way that they handled it. And just, and we, um, nobody sat down during the main event. Mm -hmm. As soon as that video started, everybody was on their feet and then they stayed on their feet until the end of the show. I didn't see, especially in my, at least in my section, but I mean, just even looking around the arena, I didn't see anybody sitting down. Right. So what, what do you think happens here? Like me and Bill, before you would come on, we were talking about, you know, when are we going to see him? If ever, what, you know, what did I still hold true that I think that he will live by that this was his final match he's not like one of these guys where i'm like yeah okay sure buddy (laughs) right yeah i think i i think sting is i think that was it like i think that was his final match like i don't think he's gonna have one more match any of that stuff i would not be surprised to see him pop up here and there um especially if there's like maybe a big match with involving Darby, maybe if whenever Darby gets the world title or something like that, you know, I could see maybe him coming to celebrate that or just popping up here and there. And I, <clears throat> in the media scrum, somebody asked him, you know, would he, you know, would he come back? And he was, said he had no interest in being a manager. That's never interested him. And he said, and he was talking about how he was like, well, I don't even know what I would have to offer. And Tony Khan looked at him like, are you insane? Like you're sting of, you have everything to offer. You're one of the greatest wrestlers ever. Of course, you've got plenty of things that you could share, but then he was, as we were going through the scrum, he started joking around because he started joking around about like, maybe he does want to come back and maybe he, he wants to, he asked Tony, he said, what are you doing after this? Maybe we need to have another conversation. And I actually got to ask Sting a couple of questions. And so the first question I asked him was when, when did he decide that revolution 2024 was going to be, you know, the, the last match. And then I asked him if there was any, resistance to him going out undefeated and that was the question he answered first and he said yes he was very resistant to going out undefeated um that he he didn't really want to go out undefeated and they kind of convinced him that this was this was happening like him and tony and darby and the bucks were like no you're you're going out on top (laughs) and then um but he said that he decided to retire like he said he had some conversations with tony on and off and tony wanted him to stay through Wembley and he just was like you know I don't think my body can handle it he was like I'm just really really starting to feel it and um so when he was joking about it he's like maybe I will come back for Wembley and Tony was like don't get wrapped up in this feeling and like (laughs) talk yourself into doing something you don't want to do and he was like well we'll talk about it later so uh, yeah I don't know Um, maybe he comes to Wembley and maybe he accompanies Darby to the ring or something like that. But I, I think he's, I think he's done with, uh, with, with wrestling and especially cause you know, he's still, he talked in the promo a couple weeks ago about losing his dad recently. And so I'm sure he hasn't really had a whole lot to, a lot of time to process that because he's been, you know, preparing for his last match. So I think now he can kind of process, you know, his career ending and then also the loss of his father. And so I don't, I wouldn't expect to see him for, quite a while if he does come back yeah uh bill so don't you um tell me where to go next here by the way i'm still trying to figure out how to get out of this place um and also bill if you have any questions for samantha you know feel free since unfortunately we couldn't get the group thing to work <laughs> um so what do you know about this game samantha i don't know anything about it <laughs> it's called wrestle quest and uh, it it's, entertaining. It, it's a pro wrestling RPG done in like the old turn based um, turn based system, basically. Nice. So me and Bill are doing this series after you win. Oh, thanks for the confidence, Bill. After you win, I'm getting low on items here. So I'm getting less confident as the minute passes. Um, go up and to the left. OK. So can you get some more sting memories while I um while I, while I battle these guys here. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Um, I think the coffin match that he did at Wembley with him and Darby, 
um, and Swerve, and it just that was a really cool thing. And obviously, he put he put Swerve in the coffin, and Swerve's hair was I think Swerve's hair was sticking out of the coffin, so he was joking that he didn't actually lose because he wasn't all the way in because part of his hair <laughs> was sticking out of the coffin. And so I thought that was a I really enjoyed that one. I'm trying to think. Um, well, we have a very important question from Bill right now. Yes. Hold on. His important okay. question is, can I have $5, Samantha? <laughs> sure. Well, you caved in pretty easily at that. Okay. I want to give him $5. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, go ahead. What was your other one you said? Yeah, I was just trying to think of some other moments. Oh, for me personally... Um, I guess my one of my favorite moments was the collision that they did in Charlotte this January because they wrestled, um, Sting and Darby wrestled the Work Horsemen. Um, I've known the Work Horsemen for a very long time because they are, um, they used to wrestle at my local promotion. Anthony Henry um, was the, he was the PWX champion for a year. Um, I watched James Drake come in. I've watched both of them. I've um, gotten to know them over the last probably seven or eight years and so to see them get that match with sting in north carolina i thought was just really was really really cool and actually um jd drake tweeted the other day about how they were handpicked um to be in that match um and like anthony henry had shared a memory where um sting told him he had some of the best kicks in the business that he'd ever seen and he was like you know that's good enough for me <laughs> and so just to see the, just to see all their hard work and to get that moment um, with Sting in Charlotte, I thought was just really, really cool. And so just, and I enjoyed the match. I thought the match was fun um, and it was a really cool thing, but I was just really the firm. So that match will always stand out to me just because um, it involved two people that I, I know and have watched wrestle, you know, in small little crowds. And then they get to wrestle in a huge crowd against one of their, uh, one of the best to ever do it, and that they were chosen to they were chosen to be in that match. and so I, I thought that was a, a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Bill's now telling me to go down. Okay, well, Bill, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get out of this forest thing. I, I don't know if we're an hour and forty two minutes. We didn't really make that much, certainly not as much progress as I thought I wanted to make, <laughs> but it is what it is. This game is harder than I, not harder than I thought. You know what's, I'll tell you right now, folks, the thing that I don't like about this game is the puzzles. And this is not the first time that I, we have been stuck on these puzzles. The other time <laughs> was, oh, the junkyard thing. That's right. With the junkyard, the junkyard dog area. That's where we were stuck at. And whoever, with the, the makers of this game, not a fan, god damn it. <laughs> not a fan, not a fan of the puzzles. I will say that much. Um, so basically, Samantha, this game is you're like toy wrestlers. Muchacho Man's inspiration is Macho Man Randy Savage, and it's really good when it's not puzzles and you're stuck like I am right now. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it's fun. Yeah, the junkyard dog puzzle, that was an experience. It definitely was. It definitely was. Um, what else did I want to ask you? Uh, well, let's real quick talk about the whole... Give me your thoughts on the event as a whole. I mean, Bill was over here telling me, he's like, that might be a, the, the show of the year. Now, I only literally watched the tag team match, so I can't vouch for that. What are your thoughts? That is... It to me that was the best show that I've been to since All In. I went to the original All In um, in Chicago, and that is probably my favorite event that I've been to since then. And I've had some other really good shows that I've been to and had fun at, but this was just a completely different experience because of the environment, um, being in Greensboro, knowing what was coming at the end of the night. Um, the crowd was just, for the most part, was into it all night long there were some really great matches um like some of the matches i was really looking forward to other than the sting match was um eddie kingston versus brian danielson which i really enjoyed um and i really and the the triple threat uh with swerve and hangman and Mojo. joe i loved that match i thought it was really great um 
And I would never thought that I would ever hear Hangman booed in the state of North Carolina because he also wrestled for my local promotion for a while. So I think he was I think he was on his way out when James Drake and Anthony Henry were making their way in. So I don't think they crossed paths, but I was just at um, Hangman's always been very popular here. So I was I didn't ever expect to hear him booed and he was basically booed out of the building. Uh, so, you know, he's doing he did his job. And then I was I knew that Takeshita and Osprey would be good. I didn't know it would be that good. That it was a for me it was a legitimate match of the year contender. I was on my feet several different times. Um, throughout that match, I was on the edge of my seat here and there. I just didn't, I, that, that match is probably one of the, it, not probably, it is one of the best matches I've ever seen in person. Um, and I was just, I could, I was surprised that I knew it was going to be good, but like it just, it completely blew any of my expectations out of the water. It was better than anything I could have imagined. And so I really, really enjoyed the show a lot. And it was definitely one of the best shows I've been to. And I've been to a few AEW shows I've been to. I was at uh, Double or Nothing in 2021, which was the first pay-per-view back after the pandemic. And that was a really great show as well. Um, I went to one of the first, I went to the first fight for the Fallen when it was still in Daly's place because it was on my sister's birthday. So I took her for her birthday. And I've been to um, I've been to Dynamite, um, a couple of Dynamites here, and now I've been to Collision. Uh, so I think Rampage is the only AEW show I've not seen live yet. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I think just overall, even with any company that I've ever been to, because you know I've been to plenty of WWE shows and things like that, and Ring of Honor as well. I've been to a couple of I think I've been to I say a couple. I think maybe only one Impact show. Um, and Sting was actually on that show. That was the first time I saw him live was in 2009 when TNA came um, came here. I saw him and he was uh, he wrestled. I think it was Rhino. I think is what the match was. I actually went and found the pictures on Facebook the other day. I need to I need to post them on Twitter. But yeah. So uh, but yeah, I loved Revolution. I thought it was and I thought it was an incredible show. All right, so hold on here. Let me. So Bill's giving me instructions. Let me see if we sure. can figure this out here so you'll go down where the statue is when you get to the statue go straight down so here's the statue okay you'll go down okay when you get to so go straight down i feel like i was here before bill you can't go straight down there are trees here unless he means just go down here no it says go it's gonna make me go to the right all right look i'm gonna go at the statue here i am at this weird elephant statue tell me where to go Tell me where to go from the elephant statue. So anyway, while we wait, while I wait for his response, as far as this goes, I'll, I'm gonna be really sad if I die because <laughs> we've all because even though all we've been doing is running around for the last half hour, I probably I went up a good amount of levels. So I'm gonna be, you know what? Now that I'm, now that I'm thinking about that, hold on, save. There, now I feel. Although, maybe that wasn't a good idea either, because I'm in a worse spot than I was in an hour ago. Whatever. Alright, from the elephant, go down, and then when you see the concrete, go right. Okay. Let's do that, and then we'll talk to Samantha more about Sting. Oh, for the love of God. Where's the, okay, now what? Where do I go from this crossroads, Bill? Oh, wait. This looks like this might be the entrance right here. Aha! All right. Come on, please, please. I hear no music. That's a good sign. <laughs> but I just hope it's on the right side. Oh, thank God. Oh, my God. Whew. All right. We're out of there. Thank God. Let's, you know, if just for fun, we're going to visit Jake the Snake statue. <laughs> All right, let's. Me and Samantha will experience the snake, Jake the Snake statue. Jake the Snake's Robert. Jake the Snake Roberts is revered throughout the wrestling world for his psychological tactics during matches. His sinister charisma made him an exciting heel and character to follow. Much like his signature python, Jake is hypnotic, intimidating, and powerful. 
The wrestler used these skills throughout his rivalries with various superstars, many of which were ended with one of Roberts' signature DDTs. Jake Roberts was a um a sta an early Sting feud, wasn't he? I, I believe like so. He was actually he was part of the show on Sunday because he came out with um, Lance Archer when they did the eight man All Star Scramble, and so he was there ringside uh, for that match. So I was glad to see. I'm always glad to see Jake Roberts, and then so that was cool that he got to be obviously he got to be there to 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 watch Sting's final match in person too. Did I really say Jake the Snakes or Jake's the Snakes? I believe you did. <laughs> Whatever, Bill. I'm tired. Do you know how long we were running around the friggin' forest? All right, anyway. <laughs> wow, there's just something about Jake the Snake. Maybe it's his sinister charisma. Maybe it's his awesome DDTs. Maybe it's his snake. Whatever it is, the man is undeniably a legend. Unquestionable, amigo. <laughs> Do you know that there was once a Jake the Snake video game? It was it was never mass produced, but a prototype is said to exist somewhere. Really? Oh, wow. Yes. Trust me. Uh, was that mean he's lying? Alright, whatever. Yeah. It sounds like <gasps> it. <gasps> what the what's this? Jake the Snake Snake? <gasps> Bill! We have to do the side quest now. You have to stay on now with me after I hang out with Samantha for another hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is cool. We got a side quest. All right. We're going to visit the village, and then I'm probably going to hang up with you and get Bill on here for the last, like, ten minutes nah. here. No, Bill, I'm just kidding. I've worked tomorrow. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote, hmm. Yes, now maybe. I wonder, because I read that... I had read or saw that you get summons in this game of these wrestlers... I'm wondering if that's how I unlock the summon by completing that quest. Safari outpost. All right, let's get some items. Samantha, let's see. What else did I... <laughs> okay, Bible. <laughs> um, let's see what... Um... All right, no, more about Sting. So give me one more Sting memory that you got while I shop for items. I'm trying to think um i think just any, like the the joker sting was just really memorable i think he really i mean he could, of course could kind of cr cross into like hokey territory but i think that sting always just he did it reminds me of like when Co cody was stardust because cody hates the stardust character mm -hmm. but i thought that he did so well with it like i love the stardust character and so this kind of reminds it seems like people either love joker sting or they hate joker sting but i thought he just i thought he did a really good job just really getting into that character um i thought it was i always thought it was a lot of fun uh, when he was doing that stuff and then i can still can't believe like he looks to be nearly 65 years old like he looks incredible um and it's just and it's crazy to think of like just how much he's been through and like, and he even mentioned it during the scrum. Like he was talking about how, you know, uh, when he first started out, he was doing steroids. And then he said that um, him and Jim Helwig, like they had to break up or they would have killed each other because he was like, we were literally, we both literally had roid rage. And he was <laughs> like, and <laughs> Darby was cracking up and he's like, it's true. He was like, I, and he's like, I stopped steroids in 1990 and he was like and he didn't and he was like but he was like if we had stayed together as partners he was like we literally would have killed each other so what the hell is that on the right it looks like a rhinoceros of some sort a giant one hornsworth uh, hornsworth sounds like he would sound like this uh i'm the finest nurse what the fuck <laughs> i'm the finest nurse juggalaji all right <clears throat> I'm the finest nurse Juggalagi has to offer. Remember, you can't spell Rhino without RN. Need some <laughs> healing? Yes. Yes. Now let's see who this person is. That looks like they sh they're from Coco. Fonswella. Hey, you want to get you want to be Fonswella, Samantha, real quick? Read this sure. out. Sure. Wait. Hang on. Can I? My screen. Hang on. I gotta make my. It comes up slower, uh, lower on my, or slower on my screen, and 
I actually have both screens open, my little Skype screen and the, let me see if I can make this one bigger so I can actually read it. <laughs> okay. Ay, 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 my bones are killing me, or they would be if I weren't already dead. There you go. That was your big voice acting debut right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's explore for like another minute or two, and then I'll switch it, switch off the bill so I can say we can I can have final words with him on this thing. All right. Oh look, it's the same guy. Why is he out here now? <gasps> drip drop, drip drop, drippity drop. This is where the big battle is going to happen. I can't wait to see it. What big battle? Pretty small ring, actually. <laughs> Our Andre statue. We were already here, I believe. Diablo Azteca. Here, why don't you be Diablo Azteca? All right, let me let me see here. <laughs> Luchadors may look intimidating, but how many of them live live a double or even triple life behind the mask? There it is. Do we, I don't think we've read this on. No, I'll read this. Standing at seven foot four and five hundred and twenty pounds. Andre the Giant towered over all who dared enter the ring against him. Known, I think we did read this now that I'm reading it again. <laughs> Known as the eighth wonder of the world, Andre won multiple championships with his imposing statue and powerful slam. After his death in 1993, Andre the Giant became the first ever Hall of Fame inductee. We definitely read this before. Me, me and Bill. Okay. All right, so then any closing sting thoughts before I um, switch you off to Bill and then we head out of here for the stream? Uh, just my, my main thing is just I, Sting is incredible. I'm glad he got the run that he did at the end. I'm glad that he got to... I, I'm just glad that he got to see how much fans still loved him um, and that other wrestlers still think so highly of him. And... Um, and I'm glad that I got, you know, a few moments to, to talk to him and I got to, um, and I got to thank him before I asked my questions. I thanked him for everything that just everything. And so, um, I'm just so glad that, um, that he got that moment and that I was able to be there. Um, and I hope, I hope we see him again. And if we don't, that's fine too. Uh, he, he deserves to rest now. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. All right. So why don't you, last thing you're going to do here for the stream, Samantha, you're going to be Macomber. Okay. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should get hollow point foam darts. Hmm. Oh, sorry. I get distracted when I'm thinking about ammo. You, <laughs> you must be the best, the the pest control professional. You're gonna say the best control. <laughs> I almost did. <laughs> See, I have taken out many pests, like those mutant rats back in Buckswood. Splendid. That kind of gumption is just what we need. Did you read the briefing? What briefing? Briefing? These are spandex, senor. Bravery and wit. I bet you slay all kinds of wild ones. Anyways, there are rabid teddy bear, teddy bear creatures in the jungles to the north and south. They've been disrupting our attempts at building aqueducts to some of the local villages. Take out all five groups of... Is that your signs? U-R-S-I-N-E-S. Uh, okay. Your signs, I guess. And then return here for your reward. Okay. So, I mean, it's not like... Okay, I was going to say, it's not letting me move. Okay, well, I guess... I, I mean, the fact of the matter is that they didn't say new quests, so I don't know if that's real or not. But, <laughs> all right, Samantha, why don't you tell people where they could follow you, and I'll let you jump out of here and get Bill on for a few minutes to close sure. off. Sure. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Samantha underscore 1713. That's where I'm most active. Um, you can also follow uh, my uh, podcast, 
on Twitter and on Instagram. It's at Power Bombshells, and we live stream every Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern on the Fight Game Media YouTube channel. All right, very good, Samantha, and I'll talk to you later. All right, sounds good. Thanks for having me. All right, now we're going to connect Bill here. Whenever those calls come through, they're pretty loud, so I apologize to everyone about that. Man, can I do an impression? Hey, Bill, how was your uh, your time away from me? <laughs> what do you, What do you mean? I've been with you the whole time. <laughs> You're Samantha, Samantha in disguise. Yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, we didn't get as much as I wanted to get accomplished, but right. I think off off recording, I'm going to try to do that puzzle thing by myself, and then that way when we pick it up. Next time on WrestleQuest, we'll, um, you know, we'll just, ha- we'll be able to move forward. Um, All right. So, Bill, give me some final sting thoughts while I save this game. Um, you know, just thinking of Sting all around, one of the most beloved individuals ever in wrestling. Uh, top 10 all-time babyface for me. Uh loved him as a kid uh respect him as an adult all around a great person and he got one of the great send-offs i think of all time mm-hmm. yes i um i i there's not much else to say i don't think like you know thank you sting and yes, please for, you, please sting. for the very for the love of god don't all of a sudden randomly wrestle next month <laughs> that's because i don't think he will but i mean like i said these are, are wrestlers and they eventually always want to get that one last spotlight but yep i don't know i think sting might be of a different breed and the fact that he uh like i said he's different than all the other ones like is they it, it almost feels like He's going to be the one that's just quietly retires and maybe comes mm-hmm. back. I do think that he's going to come back and do conventions and autograph signings. Yes. I don't that, have a problem that, with that. That's fine. But the, the next time I, I and I, it, I think Darby eventually is going to win the, the world title. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I want to see. That's ideally I want to see him then too is yeah. to be there for Darby. But all right, Bill, where can people find you? All right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or X, whatever you call it, at House of Bill. Instagram, Mr. Billiam85. And, well, here on Twitch, Bull Bull 4. And as far as me, uh, of course, it's official RP Jimmy on Twitch, but it's also official RP Jimmy on YouTube, as well as uh, on Instagram. You can find me at That's Podcasting. All right, everyone. See you later, and we'll be back at some point for some more WrestleQuest.